Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Xavier, one of the strongest and deadliest mage in the game. In this video, I will also talk about how Xavier works in full details, which includes his skills, passive, builds, emblems, along with some tips and guide on how to use him in a match. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. Xavier has remained as one of the most picked mages in the current meta. What makes him so special is that most of his skills have a long range, allowing you to kill enemies from a safe distance, making him a solid pick if you want to channel your inner sniper. But mastering him can be difficult, especially if you have never used him before. So, in order to master Xavier, you must first understand how his passive and skills work. I will first talk about his first and second skill, and after explaining his first and second skill, I will then explain his passive, and then his ultimate. So let's start with his first skill. With the help of his first skill, Xavier fires a mystic bullet that deals 425 magic damage to enemies it passes through. And unlike other skills, this skill can hit multiple enemies at once without any damage reduction. Meaning if you hit multiple enemies at once, they will all receive the same amount of damage, making it the perfect burst skill in crowded team fights. And the distance of this skill gets increased every time you hit an enemy. Meaning you can deal damage to enemies outside your field of vision, as the range gets increased every time you hit an enemy or minion. So make sure to take that to your advantage, as you can easily poke the enemies from a safe distance. And this is also your main source of damage, so make sure to max out this skill first. Now, let's talk about his second skill. With the help of his second skill, Xavier conjures a mystic barrier that lasts for 5 seconds, and enemies that come into contact with the barrier will take 125 magic damage, and also be slowed by 50%. And if you hit your second skill with your other skills, the barrier will expand into a mystic field for 3 seconds, dealing 300 magic damage to enemies and also immobilizing them for 1.2 seconds. And whenever you run through his second skill, your movement speed will be increased by 50% for a few seconds. And this skill can hit multiple enemies at once, but make sure to aim properly, as it is very easy to miss. Now, let's talk about his passive, and after his passive, I will then talk about his ultimate. With the help of his passive, every time you hit an enemy hero with your skills, your skills will get enhanced. And there are three stages to his enhanced skills. And you can see your passive stage below your health bar. The first stage of your passive will increase your movement speed by 50% for 1.2 seconds. And the second stage will increase the width of your skills. And the third stage will reduce the cooldown of your skills by 4 seconds. And at the third stage, Xavier enters the transcendence state. And during this state, all your skills will get enhanced, and the icon of your skills will also become purple. And the transcendence state lasts for 5 seconds, but you can increase the duration of the transcendence state by hitting the enemies with your skills. As every time you hit an enemy with your skill, the duration of your transcendence state gets increased by 1 second. So all you need to do is hit the enemies with your skills, so that your skills will stay enhanced. So make sure to aim properly when using his skills. Now. Let's talk about his ultimate skill. With the help of his ultimate, Xavier unleashes a beam of mystic magic that deals 650 magic damage to all enemies in a straight line on the map. And when you use this skill, Xavier will immediately enter the third stage of his passive, allowing you to directly enter the transcendence stage. And this skill is kinda similar to Moskov's ultimate. And if you're familiar with heroes like Noveria and Moskov, then you'll definitely know how to use this skill properly. And this skill is really useful as it allows you to hit enemies from a safe distance. And even if you don't kill enemies with this skill, you will still receive an assist. But most of the times, you will have to predict the movement of the enemies when using this skill, as it is very easy to miss. Now, let's talk about his builds and emblems. For his builds, you must prioritize items that provide you mana regeneration and cooldown reduction, as Xavier consumes a lot of mana right from the very start of the game. 
and his passive and skills also benefit from cooldown reduction items. So you will need to buy mana regeneration and cooldown reduction items, all while still being able to dish out a decent amount of damage. And for that, this is the best build for him. This build will provide you with mana regeneration, cooldown reduction, and also a lot of magic power, making this one of the most suitable builds for Xavier. And for his emblem, in order to maximize Xavier's kill potential and overall effectiveness in the game, go for the Mage Emblem. The Mage Emblem will provide you with magic power, cooldown reduction, and magic penetration. And for his first talent, go for Rapture. Rapture will provide you plus 5 adaptive penetration, increasing your damage potential. And for his second talent, go for Weapon Master. Weapon Master will increase the magic power you receive from emblems, equipments, talents, and skills by 5%. And for his core talent, go for Impure Rage. Impure Rage will increase the damage of your skills, allowing you to deal more damage when using your skills. Now, let's talk about his gameplay and how to use him in a match. During the start of the game, unlock your first skill first as his first skill is really useful at poking and clearing the minion wave. And remember, Xavier doesn't have mobility skills, so make sure not to overextend when poking the enemies. And for his battle spell, most people usually go for flame shot, but instead of flame shot, I'd recommend you to go for flicker or sprint instead. As flicker and sprint will allow you to escape from sticky situations. But if the enemies have a lot of CC skills, you can also go for purify. And during the early game, you must rotate to the side lanes whenever possible, as rotating to the side lanes could greatly help your side laner, especially if you're able to successfully ambush the enemy, and make sure not to overstay in the side lanes, especially if you're not level 4 yet. If your gank was unsuccessful, make sure to immediately go back to your lane, and farm your minions, and I'd recommend you to rotate to the other lanes only after you finish clearing the minion wave and make sure to keep an eye on the turtle, and once the turtle spawns, you must help your jungler contest the turtle. Remember, you must know when and where to rotate during the early game, and you must also know which kind of enemies you can kill, and which kind of enemies you cannot kill. Because most of the time, I see people trying to kill the enemies which they know they can't kill, and they usually end up being killed instead. So make sure not to overcommit, until and unless you're sure that you will be able to kill the enemy. So, your priorities during the early game should be reaching level 4, helping your jungler take the turtle, and rotating depending on the situation. Remember, you must prioritize rotating when playing as the mage, because you are the main damage dealer of your team. And the way you rotate and play during the early game, will mostly decide the outcome of the mid game, so make sure to keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about his mid-game. During the mid-game, you should have at least one or two of your core items, depending on your farming efficiency. And you should be able to start dealing a decent amount of damage at this stage. And during this stage, you must constantly keep an eye on the minimap, and try to rotate accordingly, as your presence in a teamfight could greatly increase the chances of winning the game. And you could also snipe low HP enemies using your ult, so make sure to keep an eye on the minimap. And you must also know how to play aggressively, all while still being careful. And during a teamfight, try to keep some distance between you and the enemies. And only attack the enemies from a safe distance. As the enemies could easily kill you, as you are very squishy. And remember, Xavier is weak against high mobility heroes like Lancelot, Gujan, Kagura, and other heroes that have dash abilities. So always make sure to be extra careful when playing against them. Now, let's talk about his late game. During the late game, Xavier can deal a huge amount of damage, and you will also be able to kill most of the squishy enemies without much problem. But make sure to be careful about your positioning, because most of the times, the enemies will be hiding in the bushes waiting for you, so make sure to check every bush before entering one. And if possible, try to stay with your tank during the late game, so that the enemies won't be able to kill you easily. And remember, Timing and positioning is the key to winning during the late game. So always wait for the perfect moment during a teamfight, as one wrong move could instantly lead to your defeat. And you can also steal the Lord using your ultimate, so don't be afraid to use your ultimate, 
as it has a short cooldown. And make sure to use your skills to check the bushes during the game, and always stay with your tank. So, during the late game, your priority should be playing safe, all while still being aggressive, and if there is no one tanking for you, then I'd recommend you to retreat. So, what do you think about Xavier? Make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments, and consider leaving a like on the video if you have watched this far. And subscribe to my channel if you're new. Thank you for watching.